Hi, this is Mrs. Wiest, and I'm here today to explain to you how we classify matter. There's going to be a lot of notes for this podcast, so when you're taking your notes, you're going to have to pause the podcast to write down your notes, and you also want to write fairly small on your uh, page in your packet so that you can fit all the notes in. You're probably also going to find that you have to flip that paper over and write on the back side as well. So you want to leave about 10 minutes or so to be able to watch the podcast and take all the notes. And remember, you can always back it up and watch sections again if you don't quite catch everything. All right, here we go. Matter is divided into two basic categories, either pure substances or mixtures. So you need to write that down in your notes. Pure substances or mixtures. Now, what is a pure substance? A pure substance is an element or a compound. A mixture is just a physical combination of two or more pure substances. So, for example, salt water would be a mixture. It has salt and water mixed together. Now, elements and compounds are both pure substances. An element, like oxygen or carbon, is found on the periodic table. Compounds are made up of two or more elements bonded together. So, for example, water is a compound made up of the elements oxygen or hydrogen. Mixtures are divided into two categories. They are either heterogeneous or homogeneous. So, what's the basic difference between these two types of mixtures, heterogeneous and homogeneous. In heterogeneous mixtures, you can see the parts. Heterogeneous mixtures are divided into three categories. The first category we're going to call basic. The parts are very easily seen and they're very large. In the picture on the left, you see granite, which is a kind of rock. It's very easy to see all the different kinds of minerals that are mixed together to make up that rock. Same thing with vegetable soup. The particles are pretty big and you can easily see all the parts. The second category is called suspensions. You can still see the parts, but they're a little bit smaller. There's little particles and they either float or sink. So things like muddy water, orange juice with pulp, Italian salad dressing, and even oil and vinegar are considered suspensions. The third category is colloids. The particles in a colloid are even tinier. They're very, very small. They're very difficult to see, and they do not settle. The particles will scatter light, and this scattering of light is called the Tyndall effect. You can see a picture of that in the lower right part of your screen. So things like milk, whipped cream, jello, and fog are all considered to be colloids. Here's another picture of fog. Sunlight is traveling through the air and bouncing off the little particles of water in the air, and you get the Tyndall effect. Here's another example of the Tyndall effect. This, I believe, is an airport, and it looks like an airplane coming in for a landing, and the headlights of the plane are the light is bouncing off all the little particles of water floating around in the air. Now, homogeneous mixtures, you cannot see the parts. The little particles are so tiny that they are too small for the human eye to see. Another name for a homogeneous mixture is a solution. Examples would be Kool-Aid, cranberry juice, Mountain Dew, Coke, or root beer, salt water, and even solid solutions like brass or stainless steel are also homogeneous. Air is a homogeneous mixture as well. Solutions have two parts. They have a solvent and a solute. The solvent does the dissolving. It also determines the state of matter of the solution. The solute is the substance being dissolved by the solvent. How do we separate a mixture? What if we have a bucket of buttons? 
Well, that would be easy to do. We could just use our fingers and separate and pick up the buttons and put them in different piles. But what about a mixture like salt water? We can't actually pick out the salt with our fingers. So how could we get the salt out of the water? Well, there's basically three different ways of separating mixtures. And they are filtration, chromatography, and distillation. Filtration is for separating heterogeneous mixtures by particle size. So for example, filter paper. Like if you're making coffee, the, fil the filter paper will catch the coffee grounds. Or we could use sieves or screens to separate gravel into different particle sizes. Paper chromatography uh, is another way to separate mixtures. So if we have a mixture of ink, we can separate the different pigments using paper chromatography. We're going to be doing this in lab a little later this year. And the mixture is separated because the molecules in the mixture have different masses and different polarities. You probably did this in biology. Uh, you can use paper chromatography to separate mixtures of chlorophylls onto your chromatography paper. Distillation is a way of separating liquid mixtures based on differing boiling points. So for example, crude oil is separated into all the different fuels that we use, like diesel oil and kerosene and gasoline, because each molecule has a different boiling point. Another common commercial application of distillation is alcoholic beverages or spirits. So if you look at the picture on the right hand side of your screen, in the flask there we would have some kind of vegetable matter like a corn mash that's been allowed to ferment and it now has a alcohol content and that is heated. The alcohol boils off, turns into a vapor, travels through the tubing, and then recondenses as a liquid over in a separate container. All right, let's try some examples here. We're going to give you an example and you need to write that down and identify it. And then after a moment, we will give you the answer and you can check it. All right, here we go. First example, looks like lasagna. Yum. Is this an element, compound, or mixture? And if you said mixture, you're right. Air. Is air an element, a compound, or a mixture? Air is also a mixture. Calcium. Calcium is an element. Sugar. C12H22O11. Sugar is a compound. Coffee. Coffee is a homogeneous mixture. It's a solution. H2O, pure water, that's a compound. Tap water would be a mixture because there are things dissolved in the water. Blood. Blood is a heterogeneous mixture. It's actually a suspension. If you let blood sit for a while, it'll settle and the cells will sink to the bottom. Toothpaste. Toothpaste is a mixture, and this particular type of toothpaste has little sparkly particles in it, so I would call this a colloid. Baking soda, NaHCO3. This is a compound. All right, so that's our podcast on the classification of matter. Make sure you review all the vocabulary in this podcast and be ready to use all these terms in our classroom activities. And don't forget to formulate a question from the podcast and be ready to uh, ask that when you get to the classroom tomorrow. See you later.